which of the following is not a scoring system used for stratification of prognosis in patients with acute coronary syndrome you have to pay attention to the wordings of this question subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from prep ladder Which of the following is not a scoring system used for stratification of prognosis in patients with acute coronary syndrome? You have to pay attention to the wordings of this question. What is the question asking? Not a scoring system. For what? For stratification of prognosis in patients with acute coronary syndrome. So you encounter two kinds of scoring systems whenever you talk about a patient with chest pain and acute coronary syndrome. The first set of scoring systems, they are basically designed to assess the likelihood of acute coronary syndrome in a patient presenting with chest pain right so when you have a patient in emergency room with chest pain you can assess the likelihood of that being an acute coronary syndrome using these scoring systems and once you confirm that you are dealing with a case of acute coronary syndrome for prognostication we have a separate set of scoring systems right so those scoring systems are particularly more useful when you talk about non ST elevation acute coronary syndrome because that can help you make a decision regarding the intervention whether you need to follow a early or immediate invasive strategy or whether you want to follow a conservative strategy that decision can be facilitated by facilitated by this prognostic scores which you apply once you have diagnosed the case as acute coronary syndrome so in this question he is asking following which of the following is not a scoring system for stratification of prognosis he is not asking about the scoring systems which are used for the stratification of risk of acute coronary syndrome in a patient presenting with chest pain right so options are hard score edax score timi score and gray score i think we are all familiar with timi and gray scores and we do talk about that whenever we talk about non st elevation acute coronary syndrome right so gray score more than 140 or timi score of more than 3 right we consider those patients for the invasive strategy right we no longer follow the conservative approach of merely giving dual antiplatelets and heparin in those patients and we also know that timi has separate set of criteria for the stemi as well as non st elevation acute coronary syndrome so that makes it very clear right what are we dealing with we are dealing with option c and d which are basically prognostic scores in patients with acute coronary syndrome right so what about the option a and b hard score and edax score right you are right so hard score and edax score are basically used for understanding the risk of acute coronary syndrome in a patient presenting with chest pain right so in that case what are our correct answers option a which encompasses two options a and b that's the right answer right okay so just a quick look at what is hard score so hard score basically looks at history Uh, whether history is suspicious of acute coronary syndrome highly moderately or slightly suspicious of acute coronary syndrome you give some score there and then ecg findings which are whether they are suggestive of ischemia or not suggestive of ischemia age of the patient we know like with increasing age the chances of ihd and acute coronary syndrome increases then presence or absence of risk factors risk factors which are well established as a risk factors for atherosclerotic coronary vascular disease and the initial troponin level right these are the components that go into hard score so any patient presenting with chest pain hard score of more than 3 not 3 more than 3 more than 3 is highly suggestive of acute coronary syndrome like it leans towards the acute coronary syndrome on the other hand if it is less than 3 3 or less than 3 in a patient with chest pain if serial troponins are also negative in these case right then it is kind of kind of rules out the case as the acute coronary syndrome and you can consider these patients for early discharge okay now on the similar lines we have one more scoring system called edax score so there it is considered as a low risk if the score is less than 16 and if it is 16 or more than 16 you will consider it moderate to high risk or not low risk right the characteristic that go into this are patients age there is a score given for different age bands then it takes into account the gender if male gender obviously higher risk of uh, acute uh, coronary syndrome or atherosclerotic coronary artery disease so higher score then beyond that 
it also looks at the history of whether the patient is a known case of coronary artery disease or whether he has risk factors if risk factors are present whether they are three or more than three or not right and then it looks at the symptoms whether the patient is having diaphoresis whether the pain is like basically speaking the whether patient's pain is typical of angina right pain that radiates to arm or shoulder or pain that occurred or worsened with inspiration obviously that suggests that it is most likely a pleuritic kind of chest pain right so you're giving a negative score there and pain that is reproduced by palpation obviously that means it is mostly of a musculoskeletal in origin so you're giving negative score 16 or more than 16 right high likelihood of acute coronary syndrome in a patient with chest pain 16 or like less than 16 it is low risk score so less likelihood of that chest pain being acute coronary syndrome right okay now this TIMI specific score for unstable angina or NSTEMI or in other words non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome. So that looks into age, risk factors for coronary artery disease, three or more risk, uh, more than three risk factors, use of aspirin in last seven days, known coronary artery disease, more than or one or more than one episode of angina, ST segment elevation and elevated cardiac markers. This is the components of the STEMI score, right? So more than three you would consider it as prognostically bad, right? So in that case, you would push the patient for invasive strategy and mere conservative strategy may not be adequate. Okay. Similarly, you have this GRACE score. The GRACE score has two uh, separate bands of scoring. One is in-hospital score. The other one is six-month risk score, right? And when the GRACE score is more than 140, that is where in a case of non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome, you think of invasive strategy, invasive strategy, right? Got the point? Yeah. So let us move on to this one particular flowchart that is covered in the 21st edition of Harrison. So this is basically talking about the approach to chest pain and the first investigation to do in the emergency room when anyone comes with chest pain, that's what we routinely do also, is to do an ECG and on the ECG, if it is suggestive of STEMI, well, the diagnosis is established and we know what to do next. No controversies there. If it is ischemic but not suggestive of STEMI, right? Like your non specific STD changes, or in other words, it is looking like non ST elevation acute coronary syndrome, right? You will look at the initial troponin levels. If it is less than 99th percentile, then observation and obviously hospitalization for observation. And if it is more than 99th percentile, right? You will definitely go ahead with cardiac consultation and further evaluation. Most likely, it is a case of acute coronary syndrome. Okay. On the other hand, when ECG is non ischemic, right? In that case, particularly in a patient who is not a case of coronary artery disease, we are making use of heart score, right? So, as I've already told you, chest pain, not a known case of coronary artery disease, ECG non ischemic, we do a heart score. Heart score of 0 to 3, right? A low risk of this patient having, having the acute coronary syndrome. So in that case, we will just go ahead with the serial troponin levels. If the serial troponin levels are lower than the 99th percentile, acute coronary syndrome is extremely unlikely. So you can go ahead with early discharge. So by this, you are minimizing unnecessary cost burden to the patient, right? Because there are various causes for chest pain. Not all cases are because of acute coronary syndrome. So this facilitates early discharge by including the heart score, right? If the heart score is four or more than four, obviously that's highly leaning towards the acute coronary syndrome. So you look at the initial troponin. If it is more than 99th percentile, it is more certain that you are dealing with a case of acute coronary syndrome. A cardiologist should be called in and he should pitch in for further management. If it is less than 99th percentile with a heart score of four or more than four, you have to hospitalized for further observation. But if it is low, right, in that case, you can go ahead with early discharge. Okay. So that kind of summarizes our approach to a case of chest pain.